yourself for the interior guys that are younger? How proud are you to sort of see the growth they made in the last week? I'm real. Pr I'm really proud of them. Honestly, like uh, I know this year hasn't been the year we've wanted, especially in the offensive line. But all the experience that the guys that have played and one start here, two starts there, that's going to do so much for them in the future. And I'm excited for them. I'm excited for them. You know, a year down the road, two years, two years down the road, when you know they're the offensive line that they want to be. Said all the time. Like every Friday, we have a walk through before we get on the plane or go to the hotel, and we uh, do that. We do the hurry up and field goal. So that's uh, honestly just executing. That's the coaches coaching and us doing what we're told to do. And I don't think I came at the right time, but we're prepared for that. Given that there was so little time left, did you wonder if they were going to get it all? Honestly, I, my biggest focus was getting off the field. I literally I ran off the field, and I hear the crowd chanting three, two, one, and I turn around, the ball's already in the air. I don't go in overtime. Like that's literally like that's what the thought process. Like if Brandon has an opportunity to put through the uprights, he's gonna put through the uprights. I know he had a couple here and there at Penn State, but I know Brandon's done more good for us than that. So I'm proud of him, I'm proud of how he's developed over the years and all the things and I'm proud to call him a friend. At the same time that field goal unit is one that is kind of stuck in routine, you know, the kicker has X amount of steps and all that kind of stuff. And I mean how hard was it? Do you think everyone's rushing, everyone just had to kind of Doing, you know, no... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's rushing. I think uh, on Sunday when we were watching it, Coach Freeney even said steps are overrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brandon, he's a kicker. That's what he does. Like, his job is to kick the ball through the uprights. You know? And he's a master at his craft. So I think Brandon can improv when he wants to and still make the kick. Brady described sort of a high school atmosphere in the overtimes that the defense guys were chanting offense. And mm -hmm. what was, was it different in overtime? Because it certainly seemed like the offense kind of lifted Yeah, there. we got it going a little bit. And uh, I'm happy I'm happy about that. We, I mean, we had one of those overtimes, obviously one of those kinds of games at Penn State. Didn't go our way. And we knew that you know, this time it's going to go our way. We need to fight. We need to focus. And uh, I was happy to be in there at that time. What, what did you see differently out of Devin, though? Because he seemed to, to kind of take on a different persona. That's, that's Devin. Devin's a competitor. This whole team competes. I said on, uh, on Saturday after the game, this team's never going to quit. That's one thing that they will never do. And I'd much rather have that than anything else. And my last question about the interior. Is it the improvement, is it just a function of, of getting more experience? I mean, was there anything else that you saw in the week, or is it just them getting older and getting older? I, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the experience, getting older, all that stuff, but also Coach Funk. I mean, a lot of heat's coming up here in Brock's line, not playing well, but I think Coach Funk's one of the best coaches I've ever had personally. And he sticks on those guys. He knows how to coach those guys. He knows how to get them fired up and when to get on them when not to get on them. So that's really starting to come together. And I sat on Saturday after the game, just got to play consistent. And that game's over, I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm worried about consistency. Obviously not huge rushing numbers, but enough. But pretty, pretty good, pretty steady numbers. Uh, how much does that change the offensive game plan, that you can establish a run game in, in a game like that? that but, was and it's huge. You can't just be a one-dimensional offense. you got to do pass and throw. So I mean, I'm, very, I'm very happy that we got yards. Obviously, we're in the black this time, which is where you always want to be as an offense. So... It's good. Like I said, should I keep going week to week? We'll be all right. You mentioned Daryl Funk. What has he done that, that has made you grow in some ways? And, and what do you see him getting out of these younger guys as he's bringing them along? One thing about Coach Funk is uh, he's he's really easy to be around. He's really easy to talk to. And, you know, he's kind of like a father figure to a lot of us, especially me. Uh, being around him, spending so much time with him, getting to know him and this, his method of coaching, it's not just – you know, yelling at you the whole time. Remember, he knows the kind of guys he can yell at, the kind of guys he can, you know, talk, talk to and coach. And, um, you know, everyone's got different personalities. Some guys need to be yelled at sometimes. Other guys need to be talked to. That's just part of, he's been in the business for a long time. He knows what he's doing. All these coaches are great. They do a great job. Um, Iowa has always had a pretty strong front seven, a disciplined front seven. You played against them a lot. Mm -hmm. what, what are the keys to this game? And, Especially as a they're, they're not a flashy defense. They're not a flashy offense. They're not a flashy team, but they get the job done. Uh, they have great defense, uh, good offensive line, good offense. So um, we got our work, we got our work cut out for us. It's just you know playing through the X's and O's, so the easier target obviously because they don't move a lot. And it's kind of just our will versus their will.